right, I think we are live. Um, hello, good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you may be joining us from. Uh, my name is Giuseppe Caltabiano. I'm leading brand, lead gen, and product marketing here at Rock Content. And today is my pleasure to host um, this jump session. Um, today we have Andrew Raskin with us, one of the minds behind the strategic narrative approach. But before I will go with the uh, first question, so let me spend just one minute to, to remind you what the goal of the jump session is. Um, our jump sessions are a mix of presentation, interviews like exactly the one we have today, um, and, and uh, product related webinars. Uh, they are hosted by us here at our content and they feature top marketers and SaaS experts and innovators. And basically we do all of this with one common theme, which is uh, providing advice and share trends and best practice on how to master successful storytelling and premium content experiences. Um, and, and today we have definitely one of um, those top innovators. Now, uh, let, let me tell you the story. I, I first came across Andy uh, when he wrote a few years ago, a very famous article. I think the title was the greatest sales deck I ever seen, um, which got a very considerable amount of views. That article, of course, brought Andy and his job to my attention, but not just my attention. I think quite a lot of other folks in the industry. Um, I've never personally met uh, Andy. Uh, I'm here stuck in London and is based out San Francisco. Um, but I've been recently stalking him on LinkedIn and uh, he, he was uh, so kind to answer immediately my message and accept invitation to this jump session. Um, I know we have an exceptional number of attendees today. Uh, Andy will take you and me um, behind the scenes and explain what the strategic narrative is and how to apply this to uh, your company eventually. Andy, a very warm welcome uh, to our Rock Content Jump session. I'm so glad you are here with us today. Thank you. Great to be here with you, Giuseppe. And uh, thank you for stalking me online. <laughs> You're stalking really basically. I think you're talking about liking a lot of my posts, which is really making me feel good. Uh, thank you for the encouragement uh, over All the right. years. It, it did work. Um, <laughs> well, what we'll do today is uh, I will try to split um, questions in three main groups uh, introduction, process, and the methodology of the narrative, and then some questions about the future. Um, and, and time to time, I will go with the uh, um, the questions coming from uh, from the audience. So uh, the topic of today is about building a strategic narrative for your company. Um, Andy, I would like to start today by asking to tell us something about yourself for the audience who eventually still doesn't know who you are. Uh, how did you end up doing this kind of job? And I believe you started pitching some venture capitals, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so you've heard me tell that story. I guess I'll, I'll tell that story a little bit again uh, uh, for folks who haven't heard it. So I, I started out as a software developer. So I was a computer science undergrad. And uh, after school, uh, uh, I was working as a developer and a kind of management consultant. And a friend and I had, a, or a colleague, and I had an idea for an app. And this was like uh, dot com years. So this was a uh, Windows app. And so we made a prototype of it and we thought, hey, this could maybe be a business. And so uh, of the two of us, I spoke English uh, fluently. So we decided I should write the plan and for, for the pitch for investors. And so uh, we sent my pitch to a bunch of VCs and the reaction was really bad. And one of them uh, wrote uh, back, listen, Andy, I rate every plan I get on a scale of one to 10, yours is a one. And then he wrote a bunch of uh, worst in case we thought one might be the top of his uh, his rating system. Uh, but then he wrote uh, this other thing. He wrote uh, in the margin, he wrote not a compelling story. And I didn't really pay much attention to that at first. Um, but then a few weeks later, I was walking by this Barnes and Noble. This was in Manhattan where I live. And there was a sign in the window that said, for anyone who wants to tell a compelling story. And there was an arrow to these books that when I went inside, it turned out to be screenwriting books. And so I read these books and, you know, they described a very different way of structuring a narrative uh, than what I was, you know, I didn't think of myself as, as structuring a narrative when I was doing the pitch, but I thought, okay, well, what if I try to do this? <laughs> and, you know, we, we redid it. And, you know, looking back on it, it probably wasn't a greatest job, but it was, 
it was different enough that we, when we sent out that, we started getting a lot more interest. And uh, a few months later, we had a we had a term sheet from some pretty good VCs. I'll, I'll skip a few steps, but I, I got kind of so into it that when so that company was kind of was acquired, and then I. Um, I was thinking like, well, what do I want to do next? And I got so into this, I was so into this, this story thing. I actually wound up becoming a journalist uh, for about five or six years at uh, mag- at Time Inc. So, uh, at a magazine there called Business 2.0. And I guess it was really a combination of that experience as a CEO and a lot of experience like, you know, at a business magazine, what are you trying to do? You're basically trying to make uh, companies and <laughs> their ideas, you know, you're find, trying to find the the nugget that's, you know, going to be really interesting to people and, and grab attention. So, you know, that, that, that combination uh, eventually led me to uh, be, be kind of, I went back to tech and then CEOs started kind of hearing about that story and then recommending me to one another. And that kind of is how, how this kind of started happening for me. All right, thank you, Andy. So, so you have this ability to get companies to tell a story today. Yeah. Uh, you have this kind of superpower. Um, let's give some context to our audience. Um, what exactly is a strategic narrative? Now, if I'm not mistaken, you have called it in, in some of your articles, um, the story in, in buyer's head. Uh, can you please elaborate more on this concept? Yeah. Uh, so... In general, I, I think of it as the story in any human's head that guides their actions. So, you know, if you think about it, we're, you know, maybe not about like, what am I going to eat today? Although maybe even there too, but sort of in a, in a little bit longer time frame, you know, how I'm, how I'm going to behave, what, what, I'm, what my goals are and all these things really have to do with a lot of stories in our heads about, you know, what, how one... I don't know, achieves happiness or success. And so I think each of us has a strategic narrative in our head for our own lives and maybe more than one, but, but, you know, Um, but then for in, in the business context, you know, what, what every business is looking for, what every leader is looking for is to align everyone around a a strategy. Um, and so if we can have that same narrative, that same strategic narrative be embraced by customers, employees, everybody, then it becomes this strategic narrative, not just for a person, but for the company and the whole and, and, and every, uh, everyone that the company touches. Very clear. Thank you, Andy. Now, who, who are your typical customers? Who, who is your target audience? Who do you work with? So all of my engagements are led by CEOs. Uh, I really believe that in order for this, you know, if, if you really believe what uh, what Ben Horowitz of Andreessen and Horowitz says, uh, which is that the story is the strategy, that we are looking for something that's uh, not just a kind of, not, not only marketing, not only uh product, not only uh, sales, but something that's really going to unify everything, then who, who else can can be the author of that but the CEO? Um, that said, uh, it can't just be the CEO. I think the leaders of, of marketing and sales and product have a lot, a, a lot on the line and a lot of emotion about what that story is going to be. And so when I work with teams, uh, it's a kind of balance between me working one-on-one with the CEO most of the time and then having the leadership team give feedback and ideas uh, for how to improve it as we go along. Um, I'd say the companies I work with tend to be uh, sort of middle to later stage tech, uh, B2B tech companies. So, exceptions to this rule, but usually around like series B up through kind of, um, uh, in some cases, some public companies, some uh, some brand name tech companies that you've heard of, uh, but always with that CEO as the, the main, my main contact and then leadership team as the, the support. What, what about large enterprises? You, you think they may need a similar approach or they- Oh yeah. More than- I think there is the need for it at, at larger companies too, of course. There's very few CEOs once the company gets that big 
that, you know, when we're talking like a sales force, I think Mark Benioff is very unusual in that he, you know, every year for Dreamforce, he's working on the narrative, you know, updating it for that year. Uh, and, you know, usually it stays kind of similar for a few years. Sometimes it changes a little bit. Um, you know, I just, I was contacted by, I won't say the company, but a very, very large uh, company where it was the head of, uh, head of uh, comms. And this person said, hey, I want to, I want help working on our narrative. I said, well, you know, my, my stuff is, my engagements are always led by the CEO. And this person said, well, uh, I'm leading this, uh, not our CEO. I said, okay, well, then I'm not the right person for that. And I think that, and, and nothing against her, like that's just, I think once the organization gets very, very big, um, it's the, the CEO may not, uh, you know, may not want to sort of be authoring it at that, at that level. And, and absolutely. And I remember Salesforce when they started with the, the message like um, software is dead or something similar. End of software. software. And yeah, end, the end of software, exactly. Yes, yeah. that was exactly their narrative. Yeah. Um, right. And, and, and by the way, I, I interviewed him as a one of my first assignments at Business 2.0 was to interview him. And he tells me this story. And I'm thinking, wow, this is exactly the structure that I saw in the in the movie books that I the film, the screenwriting books. And so, yeah, that was a big uh, meeting him was a huge uh, impetus for me doing this work eventually.